like the only person in the world that's gotten to play Ninja Gaiden 2 yet. They so far. So far. Yeah. You know, the combat definitely looks like an evolved version of what we saw in the first game with yeah. the violence amped up to like 13. Yeah. And that looks like a good thing. And yeah. the enemies look like things that would have been bosses in the last game or maybe sub bosses or at least like tougher enemies. Are like the are, average dude now. Yeah. And that's fucking badass. Yeah. to say that part of the reason that I love the original Ninja Gaiden when I when I the reason that it's like one of my top 10 favorite games is that not only is the combat as good as it is but you know I really did like the fact that it was a giant open world it just it kind of straddled this like RPG action RPG line in a way that to me made it better than the sum of its parts. What they're doing is that they're reducing the amount of backtracking that you had to do and like you know a lot of times if you put Ninja Gaiden down. If you didn't play it straight through, you know, you would come back to it maybe after a few weeks and you'd be like, oh shit, where did I have to go now, right? They're trying to keep it so that if you actually take a break from the game, let's say another game comes out this week that you want to play and you, you give NG2 a, a little bit of a rest, that when you come back, what you need to do is more apparent, but there will still be freedom. There will be things that you can go and do. There, there will be exploration. One stage had me running around something that was almost like the Guggenheim. It was like kind of this spiraling level where it, you know, obviously I had to get into a lot of combat, tried to use all the old Ninja Gaiden tricks that you learn, but there's a lot of new stuff. In order to get to a boss that drops the key that lets you open up this huge dragon's mouth that you have to run into and then go to the next level, that kind of thing. So there, there is still a lot. It's not, it's not nearly as simplified as you think it is. It's just that they removed a lot of the extraneous bullshit. It sounds like they're right on the right path with yeah. this then. And that's good. I mean, I guess the, re the re real question is then how, how does it feel? I mean, does it feel significantly better? Does the combat feel better than Ninja Gaiden 1? What's funny about the new combat is that it seems like it's it's just this gratuitous violence, you know, where you're cutting people's heads off, you're cutting people's arms off. There are actually game mechanics attached to each, each one of these uh, thing so like as uh, Itagaki said you know the characters that realize that they're they're not going home that night you know <laughs> they're like well screw this you know so they'll like they'll pull out a grenade and they'll like try and clamp on your leg or something and basically suicide bomb you so like everything has repercussions so you think like okay I've chopped this guy's legs off but he's still gonna crawl after you and this time with a name to take you out with him you know and uh, even guys who've had their heads chopped off, you know, they may have pulled a grenade out at the at the last minute, and if you're too close to them, you'll you'll get the you'll get the damage from. So them. that builds into the obliteration techniques as well, right? Because based on which limbs are cut off, yeah. you're going to do a different obliteration move, which is just a kind of gratuitous finisher, right? Like yeah, a fatality or something. Yeah, like that. you know, it's basically like okay, when you're near somebody who's who's been um, dismembered somehow, you press Y and like. If you time it right, he'll do an obliteration technique. But it depends on like what angle you're standing at him from. If you're from in front, or if you're in behind him, um, or if you chopped off one of his legs, both of his legs, his head, his arm, you know, whatever you've actually cut off of the person will indicate which which obliteration technique move you will do. And as you get better at the game, you'll you'll probably know which one will come out. Do you think that it's gonna get old seeing the same animation over and over again? Or are they gonna try to pop it full of so much stuff that you won't notice? I don't or? think it's gonna be like a manhunt kind of thing where it's slow, boring, oh, I'm gonna pull his head back, slit his throat thing. It's, it's very fast, very violent, and you're just like, wow, the whole time. <laughs> They did release um, HD footage of the of the of the Aqua Capital stage or whatever, and uh, when I saw it at first, and I think a lot of people who have seen it because this is the only way they've seen it, they thought it did look quite a bit like um, Sigma, or yeah. you know, in terms of the graphics. Yeah. But when Team Ninja did play that section in front of us live on a real TV screen, there's more to the lighting than you'd expect there to be, and it really does pop a bit more than you'd think it would. The amount of blood, limbs, and shit that's flying around, combined with the fact that you're moving so swiftly, like, it, it's really impressive. Those other three levels that I played, right, there's, um, 
There was a Ninja Village level that really kind of reminded me of the first stage of one. Ninja Gaiden 1. Yeah. Um, but it does look so much better. There, there are so many things going on. Really? Environments are huge. They're really, really, really detailed. And the level that really had the biggest impact on me was the New York level because, you know, you're from New York. I'm from New York, so I, I can tell like how detailed that is, and like there's all this neon going on. You know, they, they do this torrential downpour thing, which is just unbelievable, and it's it's so high res. It's almost like you can see every drop landing. It's it's nuts, and you're fighting huge fiends in this level. These huge purple things that are just like, you know, ordinarily like in, a, in another game they would be a boss, but this is just like you know you're fighting like eight of them. What sounds really exciting is that in your article it says that the final boss of the game is is going to be a badass ninja. Yeah, they said that the the new super evil boss, I guess he's from the Black Spider Clan, mm. uh, Ninja Clan, um, he may be like Mirai or something like that, but he will be, you know, kind of like a human scale. That's not to say that, and I have no idea, honestly, but that's not to say that he can't do like one of those Final Fantasy type transformations where he turns into like a like, gigantic yeah. scorpion or something like that. What we do know is that he will be, uh, you know, like like Ryu, he'll be another ninja, super ninja like that. If you take the Hurricane Pack stuff from Ninja Gaiden Black, Ninja Gaiden Sigma, where you're 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 playing as Ryu Hayabusa and you're fighting the the Ryu in the black dragon suit. Yeah, right. I think that's what the boss from Ninja Gaiden Two is going to be like, just on like a much more intense scale. I don't know if you're going to meet him in you know various encounters, various points throughout yeah. the game. You may still fight the giant boss. Those may be his subordinates at like level nine or whatever. You know, all of a sudden you got to fight this guy who's like three stories tall. Uh, I'm yeah. sure they're going to sure do some, some really... Yeah, giant bosses. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because the last game had that and people like, expect yeah. that.